What's up guys, it's Felix, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to hook up external devices to the pins on our FPGA. I went ahead and started a new project here for external I.O. And in here, let's go ahead and open up the main file. In here we're going to be messing with a different file that we haven't looked at yet which is the UCF file. UCF stands for user constraint file which basically means it's going to tell our software here which pins correlate to which input and output names. So that's that's how it knows where all of these, like the clock and the reset, all of these different inputs and outputs are defined right over here in the UCF file so that the board knows and so that the chip knows specifically what pins it's talking about when you give these names. So let's hop over there and we see some names that we're pretty familiar with. There's CLK, clock. There's RSTN. And here's LED, and you'll notice we've got the less than and greater than with the indices in here. So we have LED defined eight different times with indices 0 through 7. And if we go back over here, you'll see, look, LED is 8 bits wide. And that's why. It's because it's defined over here with eight different bits. And then here's your SPI stuff and your AVR stuff down here. So if we wanted to hook something up, we would have to come into this file and decide what pin we're going to hook it up to. And we would want to make sure that the pin isn't already being used for something. And once we've decided on a pin, we can name it and then use it over here in the, our program. I'm going to go look for something to hook up. Let's see if we can find something cool to hook up. I haven't been through here in a while. Hey, there's a RGB LED 10 millimeter. That's pretty cool. Good enough. Let's use it. Okay, so I've wired this up and you can see we've got the four different pins for the RGB LED going into the breadboard here. And I've got those hooked into some breadboard jumpers, which run into the FPGA over here. And we can see that these are wired in. It's kind of hard to see. Alright, I have the ground going to ground and then I have red going to pin 30, red to 20, or, um, green to 27, and blue is going to pin 24. And uh, unfortunately the wires I'm using here are in, not in the right order. That would be nice. But red is 30, green is 27, blue is 24. We'll remember that when we're coding. So let's hop on over here and copy one of these lines. We'll call it red, which is pin 30. Green, 27. Twenty-four. Okay. So if we do that, we can now hop on over to the main file and define these. And of course, these are going to be outputs. Red, green, blue. 
we got to add a comma here. All right, and that's really it. We have just hooked up those external pins to these three variable names, red, green, and blue. And now we can access them just like anything else. So for example, sign red equals, if we want to turn it on, it would be one bit binary one. And say we wanted the green to be off. Z uh, one binary zero. And the blue, we can make purple if we mix red and blue. So let's do that. One bit binary one. We again have to make sure that all of the outputs are driven by something. So if we were to just comment these guys out here, we would end up getting an error because they're not hooked up to anything at all. So we need to ex explicitly tell it what to do with them, even if we say hook it up to zero. So now we should be able to go ahead and build this guy. All right, now that it's finished building, upload. And we see here there's purple, so that means blue and red are on, but not green. Cool. Well, that's good, but I want to do it a different way because assigning each of these separately, red, green, and blue, is slightly annoying. Let's head back over to the UCF file and do like this. Let's make it a three bit wide channel for the RGB LED. We'll call it just RGB and give it the indices 0 through 2. Same pins. All right. Now we have to adjust this guy, and tell it it is output RGB, and let it know that this is a three bit wide channel. So we've got the most significant bit is two, and then one, and zero. Now, to assign this, we can do it a number of different ways. We could, we could continue to do it the way we're doing it by saying RGB and get the index of the red, which would be 2. And then the green would be RGB 1 and blue R G B zero. But this isn't a whole lot simpler. So what we're gonna do instead is assign them all at once. So let's wipe this out. All the way from zero to two, all three bits assigning three bits of binary and now we can give it three numbers and each one of these corresponds to one of the bits that gets hooked up in here. So that's a lot more concise and I would much prefer to work with this than what we had before. So this is a little bit interesting because it is going to appear backwards you would expect that since we called it RGB that this would be red, this would be, the middle would be green, and then the last one would be blue. But it is actually the opposite, and here's why. Because our number is written with the index 
2 over here on this end, and then this is index 1 and this is index 0, because this is the least significant bit. Um, and, and you can also see that in that the highest is on the highest index is on the left, and so this is on the left is the highest index, and this is the lowest index, lowest index. So because of that, the zero, which we had hooked up to red before, index zero is going to be red. That's index zero. So it's where we thought blue would be, but it's red because it's index zero. So keep that straight. Let's turn on red and let's turn on green and that should give us a yellow and then we'll leave blue off this time. Let's go ahead and try it out. Build. Okay. Finished building. Let's upload that. And there we go. We've got a nice yellow. Now, it does look a little bit green, and that's because the green is a little bit higher power than the red. But if we were to turn off the green, or turn off the red, you would see a much more distinct green on this. So there you have it. We have hooked up an external LED to our FPGA, configured the ports with variable names in the user constraint file, and then wired it up in our code. I hope this video has been helpful. And stick around. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to work modules a little bit more, and that'll help us to write reusable code and help us develop a lot faster. So stick around. See ya.